Sisters come a walking down the stream. Oh, the wind and rain. One stood behind, pushed the other one in, crying, Oh, the dreadful wind and rain. She pushed her in the river to drown. Oh, the wind and rain. Watched her as she floated down, crying, oh, the dreadful wind and rain. The Fiddle and Fool and the Fiddler Fair, story written by my brother, Daniel Schmidt. They called him the Fiddle and Fool. His name was Phineas, but very few people back in Athens knew that. People had a lot more on their mind during those really hard reconstruction years. But Phineas, the fiddling fool, he would be standing there, standing there right on the main street of Athens here in Georgia. He'd be standing there staring at the ground usually. People gave him a wide berth. Horses would pass by and carriages and children would kind of move away a few feet and stare at him. They usually gave him a wide berth except, except when he pulled out his fiddle and he started to fiddle. Because when Phineas played that fiddle, Man, if he had lagged behind other adults in every other area in that fiddle, he was peerless in Athens, Georgia. Almost peerless. Because the person who would play with him on the main street sometimes, that was, far as anyone knew, his only friend. And that was Belle. Now, Belle, her name, it was fitting for her. She was gorgeous with long eyelashes, deep brown eyes, and long flowing golden hair. She was she was the daughter of a local craftsman who had managed to scratch out a living during those hard reconstruction years, built himself a modest home on the, on the banks of the Oconee River. And Bell was one of the few people who would go and talk to Phineas. Most people didn't even try. See, Phineas, he never looked you in the eye. He'd always just stand there staring down at the ground. But Bell, she'd go up and talk to Phineas, and she'd bring her fiddle with her. And she and Phineas... They'd play together, and when they played together, it was some of the most beautiful music you have ever heard in your life. She'd play harmony to Phineas's melody, and there they'd be, and folks would just gather around on the main street, the fiddling fool and the fiddler fair. Now, sometimes folks would see Belle, and they'd always wave and, and greet her when they saw her on the main street. Hey, Belle, huh? you off to see your friend, the fiddling fool? Where are you off to, Belle? And they were always very friendly to her. But sometimes they'd be taken aback because Bell, instead of greeting them, she would scowl and walk off. Now, the reason it's an honest mistake is because sometimes people mistook Bell and her older sister, Mary. Mary was just a year older than Bell. She was just as beautiful as Bell was, but unlike Bell, Mary's beauty only ran skin deep. Mary seemed to have been born with some sort of sense of entitlement and her character combined the worst aspects of bitterness and entitlement, a lack of motivation to achieve anything and an excessive need to criticize other people. <laughs> Needless to say, Mary was one of those people who missed the antebellum days of the plantation. She felt that life had cheated her out of some sort of privilege she was angry at everyone and everything. Now, she didn't play any music herself, but that didn't stop her from criticizing every single musician in town, including her sister, Belle. Uh, nobody could criticize Belle's playing, but Mary would say, why are you wasting your time on that halfwit? Why are you even bothering with that halfwit? You could, you could have been somebody with a talent, God-given talent you've gotten, and you're just letting it go to waste. Now, if Mary had always been bitter, her rage boiled when she found out that Bell was betrothed to Mary, the son of the miller in town, John. John gave her a lovely gold ring, and they were going to get married that summer. The news had spread all over town very quickly, and Mary, she stomped. It was on a hot July day when she found out. She just stomped down Main Street, full of rage and looking for somebody to take that rage out on, and then she saw him. Phineas, standing there, 
holding his fiddle limply in one hand, just staring at the ground. And he was the target of her rage that day. She walked up to Phineas. She said, you hear the news? You hear that? She never loved you. She's marrying someone else. She never loved you anyway. How could she? Just a half-wit like you? She never cared for you. Mary stomped off. Phineas, of course, he didn't say anything. He just stood there, staring at the ground, as always. But after that, nobody saw Phineas anymore. They just assumed, they assumed that he must have just moved on to some other Georgia town. They didn't see him in Athens anymore after that. And all the town was, was all... Uh, in a hubbub about this wedding coming up, and the closer the wedding got, the more Mary's rage turned into something that doesn't even have a name in our language. But one stormy summer evening, five days before the wedding, she went up to her sister Belle and she invited her to go for a walk down by the banks of the Oconee River. She said, Belle, come for a walk with me, sister. I have something to show you. They walked. It was a stormy, rainy, windy night. And they walked along the banks of the river and, and Belle said, Mary, why did you ask me out this dreadful wind and rain? Why would we go for a walk on a night like tonight? Mary said, I have something for you, a wedding present. She pulled out a mother of pearl necklace. Oh, Mary, it's beautiful. Thank you. Here, let me put it on you. And so Mary stood behind Belle and clasped the necklace around her neck. And then she pushed her into the river. She pushed her into the Hi, river babies. and she went into the river and Mary stood there on the riverbank watching those fingers dip down beneath the water. Now they never found Belle's body. They dredged the, the banks of the river, but they never found her. They never found her after that. And it was a very cold, guys, it was very cold, very cold autumn. People started chopping extra wood. <laughs> Got some extra guests. People stopped, started chopping extra wood for the winter and and uh, and they just got distracted. Sort of like I'm getting distracted from this story right now. They got distracted from that terrible tragedy that had hit Athens and people stopped thinking about it. They, after the morning had period had passed for everybody, everybody except for Mary. Except for Mary, she was consumed with grief and that grief turned into a feverish madness. She stopped eating. She would lock herself up in her, in her room, stopped taking food. October came around finally, and Mary would, was up there delirious with fever in her room. And the first night of October, she heard a sound coming on the wind, the most lonesome, sad fiddle song you've ever heard in your life, blowing on the wind. And she heard that song the next night and the next one and the next one. And it got to where she, she came to expect it every night. And that song just drove her mad. She knew it meant something. The last night of October, she heard that song again, the saddest, most lonesome song you've ever heard on the fiddle. Only this time it wasn't drifting in on the wind. It sounded like it filled her whole room. And she just shut her eyes and put the pillow over her head and shut her eyes and tried to shut it out, tried not to listen to it. But it was filling her room. And finally she opened an eye there he was. There stood Phineas, the fiddle and fool, playing his fiddle, standing at the foot of her bed, and he was staring her right in the eyes. She felt like he was staring into her soul. He stood there, sawing away on that fiddle, playing that tune, and she looked at that fiddle bow, and the strings of that fiddle bow, they were long yellow hair, and the fiddle pegs of that, that fiddle, they were made of long white finger bones, and hanging from the neck of the fiddle, she saw that necklace of mother of pearl. And Phineas didn't take his eyes off of her eyes. The next morning, they didn't find Mary in her room at all. They searched everywhere for her, her parents. Finally, they asked a local farmer who told them, I could have sworn I saw Mary walking toward the river last night. Walking toward the river, and she was humming the saddest, most lonesome tune you ever heard, humming all by herself, walking in the wind and rain toward the river. Well, just like Belle, they never found Mary's body after that. And the years passed. But they say that to this day, you can go down to the Oconee River. Just out of downtown Athens, there's a pedestrian walkway. You can go down there, and you can walk that walkway, 
And they say that if you go there late at night, after all the revelers have gone home from the bars and everyone is home, if you go down there late at night, you can hear the sound of two fiddles playing alongside the river, playing harmony and melody to each other, playing the saddest, most lonesome tune you've ever heard. And sometimes on those extra dark nights, you can hear a third sound, somebody humming along with those fiddles. She pushed her in the river to drown, oh, the wind and rain, and watched her as she floated down, crying, oh, the dreadful wind and rain. The only tune that fiddle would play, oh, the wind and rain. The only tune that fiddle would play was, oh, the dreadful wind and rain. The fiddling fool and the fiddler fared.